Lastly, we come to titration, which uses burettes. Burettes come in various sizes. This one is typical. It's 50 mils long with a tap. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is make sure that it's clean inside. You can rinse it out with distilled water. Make sure it doesn't have little beads inside, which means it's greasy. But once you've rinsed it, the f next thing to do is rinse it with whatever you're titrating with. Here, I'm using 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Make sure that the tap is closed and add a little, eh, 10 or 15 mils of the liquid. It's a good idea to have a waste beaker and open the tap to let some of it through. And then turning the barrel of the pipette, of the burette, excuse me, pour it out so that, that washes and wets the entire inside of the burette to wash out whatever was in there beforehand. Right, now that we've done that, place it in a butterfly clamp like that. Look at it from two different directions at right angles to make sure that it's standing vertically. And then add your titrant. As I said, in this case, it's 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. And you may wish to use a funnel for this, if you wish, especially if you are shorter than I am. Now, I am fairly vertically gifted. But if you are not, we have step stools that will help you get up a bit more. So these are available for you if you're not quite as tall as I am. You need to be able to get your eye to the top of the burette. Now, once you've filled it, and I filled this above the calibration mark, put your waste beaker underneath, open the tap, and just get it somewhere inside. Make sure that you get it to uh, inside the calibration line rather than aiming exactly for zero. That involves a fair amount of wishful thinking, and there's also no calibrations above to help you with that. Using a burette reader, make sure that you read the initial volume. Place the dark line about five millimeters below, and it will color the meniscus. This one is about 0 0.20, 0 0.24. Record this in your notebook. Notice ink in a bound notebook. Nowhere else is acceptable. We're now going to titrate. I've previously pipetted some hydrochloric acid here. At this point, you add your indicator. We'll be using phenolphthalein at first. We will do some more later. One, two, three, four. Three or four drops is plenty. And then place your titration vessel underneath. Notice I'm using an Erlenmeyer flask. It's deliberately designed. It's got sloping sides as a narrow neck. And I've also got the tip of the burette inside the neck of the um, burette, excuse me, the flask, so there's not going to be any risk of it falling over the outsides. Get my stool here. Now, I'm holding this in my left hand, and notice that my hand is around the barrel of the tap. I'm right-handed, and actually the harder thing to do is swirl. So use your dominant hand on the flask and your subdominant hand on the tap. Open it, and notice that as the base goes in, you're getting a pink color, which, as I swirl, disappears. And so keep adding and swirling. And you want to do it so that the pink is disappearing. And the closer you get to the end point, the longer that pink is going to take to disappear, and so the slower you add. OK. It's a good idea every so often to wash down the sides of your vessel. Now, the distilled water has nothing in it, no H plus, no OH minus, so it's the volume of distilled water added is not red. Um, significant. Right. 
notice that also that we're doing this over the top of a white titration background. It's almost impossible to see the color changes against a darker colored bench, which is why you've got these white backgrounds available for you. We're getting reasonably close now, so I'm adding this drop by drop. You'll notice it's taking quite a while for the pink to disappear as we swirl it around. Mm -hmm. right, we're almost to the stage of adding half drops. Let's add one more. Yeah, that's taking quite a while to dissolve. So again, wash down the sides. And you can add it half drop at a time, which means let a drop grow on the tip of the burette, touch it to the side, and then wash it in. And we really are quite close at this point. Add another half drop, so let the drop grow. Oops, a bit further than I expected. That's still water clear if I compare it to that. maybe. The end point of a phenolphthalein titration is the palest pink that your eyes can see and that sticks around for 30 seconds. You need to have that 30 seconds in there because ultimately it will absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and go slightly more acidic. Now, that was pink, but it isn't anymore, but it did stick around for quite a while. So let's try another half a drop. Presto. Nice pale pink end point. Uh, and at this point, you read the burette again, and I've got... Yeah, if you're in doubt and you think, oh, that's gone away after you've read it, add another half a drop. Because it really didn't last long enough. There we go. Come on. Yeah, that one's not going to go. Now, you may overshoot and get that color. That's only a, you know, maybe 0.3 of a mil past the end point. If you do get to this color, you know you've gone too far, but not too far. So read this and then use the volume that you took. Let's say it took 15.2 mils. If you get something like this, oops, that's half a mil over, then let the burette run quickly until you get to 14 mils and do it slowly for the last little bit. Um, there's no point in going drop by drop from zero mils to 12 mils when it's a 15 mil titration. But you see, we've now gone well over 30 seconds and that is still noticeably different. So we have a nice pale pink endpoint. Read the second endpoint, second volume now, that's uh, 10 point to eight, and away we go. And that's how to do a phenolphthalein titration.